Good afternoon for those of you in the East Coast or wherever you're at. I'm not sure if it's morning, but um, it's a privilege. I appreciate um, the chance to share with you some of my experience of uh, inspecting design control um, operations uh, and development of devices. Actually, I think it's one of the more fun areas to inspect as an investigator. And um, so we'll jump right into it. Um, the webinar really covers the makeup of the design history file. Uh, the divine device master record is the output of the design control efforts, design transfer, and the initial control documents and control the production of the null series and the production environment. Uh, device history record documents uh, the production of the of a device or batch showing it was made in accordance with the, the device master record. Documentation of change control within design. Um, I've seen about a little bit of everything, and so we'll talk about some of that. And then any changes in design and production must be proposed, accepted, changes documented and verified to have no unattended consequences on the device before they're put into place. Um, it's very important that that be said. Just a few def definitions here. The device design history file means it's a compilation of records describes the design history of the finished device. And we're going to talk about that, uh, what some of the the agency's uh, final rule has to say about what's included and what's not included in the design history file. The design history record has, has developed out of the design device history uh, file work, but it's actually a, a, actually a better description would be to, to demonstrate that the production was made in accordance with the device master record, which is directly compiled through the transfer process into production. And then the device master record is a compilation of all the procedures and specifications for your finished device. The first comment 62 uh, under this uh, design control general comments, I just, there's several here. Uh, if you read the thing, you can't put on PowerPoint all of them, the statement one thing. So there may be more than one uh, statement attributed to certain comments. But the design control requirements are not intended to apply to the development of concepts uh, and feasibility studies. Um, you can brainstorm, dream, uh, do anything you want about a device that you might want to make and have done some feasibility studies of whether the market would bear the, uh, would give you a return of profit or if anybody even actually needs that device. Uh, doesn't make much sense to make a device that nobody wants. But once you've decided that you're going to develop a uh, device, then the plan has to be uh, established, must be established to determine the adequacy of the design requirements and to ensure that the design will eventually be released to the production, to production meets the approved requirements. And uh, one of the reasons uh, the design controls got added into the uh, CFR uh, general uh, GMPs was that Somebody would say, well, we're going to make uh, a wheelchair. And, well, I'm being a little facetious, but they couldn't get all the parts that they designed, wanted to design into the wheelchair. And so when they got done, they ended up with a trike and uh, sent it to the market. And there was really no justification for the trike, but they couldn't make the wheelchair. So essentially, the agency says once you've embarked on a, a device plan, then you have to go through the process of developing a plan how to do it and come with the adequacy of design requirements 